best CPU and GPU combo for your next gaming PC build is a great way of making sure your next system delivers the kind of performance you're hoping to achieve. Get these two components right and it makes the rest of the part selection process relatively easy. Get them wrong and you can leave performance on the table or worse, introduce a high degree of bottlenecking. That's why today I'll be recommending the best CPU and GPU combos for a range of budgets, all based on our first party performance data, testing the latest CPUs and GPUs too. Let's do this. The Aura 16X is a gaming laptop that is built to last with the latest Intel Core HX processors and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series laptop GPUs, running at a maximum of 140 watts. You get cutting edge Wi-Fi 7 support, Microsoft Windows 11 as standard and power delivery over USB for speedy Type-C charging. The 16 inch 2560 by 1600 display is sharp and looks the part, while plentiful storage and DRAM slots make this machine powerful and upgradable. Learn more at the first links in the description below. I'm gonna kick things off with some all important context about what bottlenecking is and crucially, how we can try and avoid it. Before walking through our options as far as the CPU and GPU markets go, and my best combos too. Feel free to use the timestamps below to skip through and links to all the parts will be in the description below. Now bottlenecking essentially is when one component holds another component back. A great example of this and a admittedly quite extreme one would be something like the RTX 4080 Super being paired up with a super low end Intel Core i3 CPU. This is obviously a very powerful $1,000 GPU that is immense for 4K gaming, but pair it up with a quad core i3 with low clock speeds, poor single thread performance and pretty crap multi-thread performance too, and you're not gonna see great mileage. The CPU is gonna be the constraining factor against the GPU. Now that isn't to say on the flip side that you then want to take, for example, NVIDIA's much, much lower end RTX 4060 and pair this up with a Ryzen 7 7800X3D. This CPU is obviously very expensive and in fact, one of the fastest gaming CPUs around right now, but this GPU is very low power and only really constrained to 1080p. On paper, they're gonna provide good performance, but for the money, you could notch the CPU down, saving some cash, and pour this into a higher end graphics card. It is all about balance. Now, bottlenecking changes at resolutions too. At 1080p, where higher end GPUs have to work essentially less hard, you're gonna see a more CPU constrained bottleneck than you are a GPU. On the flip side of that, at 4K, the GPU is more likely to be the bottleneck than the CPU. That's why those of you looking to game at 1080p on a fairly powerful GPU are gonna need to spend a bit more cash on the CPU to compensate. It's all all about resolution, price point, and of course the games you're playing. Now one important caveat about bottlenecking as well, and something that, let's be honest, people don't want to acknowledge, every PC has a bottleneck. You cannot avoid it entirely. Now the bottleneck might not necessarily be the CPU or the GPU. It could be that you haven't quite got enough memory or even that your storage isn't quite quick enough. And if every build had no bottleneck, your performance would basically be unlimited. Every system has at least one constraining factor that stops the performance going off the charts. What we're trying to do is avoid leaving too much performance on the table. A small CPU bottleneck that impacts frame rate by two or 3% is fine. A large a CPU bottleneck that impacts frame rate by say 35% isn't fine. Now on the CPU and GPU front, what are your options? CPU wise, there are two main manufacturers at the moment. They are of course AMD and Intel. They have fairly similar ranges. Obviously AMD goes from Ryzen 5 through to Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9, while Intel has their i3, i5, i7 and i9 lineups. And they match fairly closely as far as performance goes. AMD is right now the better platform in many ways. The AM5 socket, that these Ryzen 7000 chips use has been confirmed to be basically supported right through to 2027 and beyond. There is one big difference between AMD and Intel you should be aware of, and it comes down to cores and threads. Now on AMD CPUs, there is one type of core, nice and simple. On Intel CPUs, there are two, not so simple. Intel has P cores and E cores standing for performance and efficiency. Their performance cores undoubtedly provide a lot more performance than their efficiency cores, so it's hard to compare core counts directly 
directly between AMD and Intel. An Intel chip will very, very often have more cores, but provide very similar levels of performance. That's not to say Intel's e-cores are bad, they're useful for background tasks and other lower powered processes, but we won't dive into too many of the intricacies around that in today's video. On the GPU side, you currently have three options. That comes in the form of AMD, Nvidia, and Intel. Now, AMD have their Radeon 7000 lineup, right from the 7600 all the way up to the 7900 XTX, while Nvidia have their 4060 right up to their 4090. Intel also have their Arc GPUs as your third option, but they won't be featuring today as, plainly, they're not quite good enough just yet. If you'd like to learn more about GPU naming schemes, you can find our full Best GPUs video in the cards now, which goes into a lot more detail. Now let's begin, shall we, with the cheapest combo. What should you get if you've got about $300 to spend? My recommendation is that this combo would form part of a wider $600 build, with the CPU and GPU combo making up anywhere from about 35 to 60% of your build's overall cost. Now for this, we're going to have to make some sacrifices in order to get it into that price point. And that comes in the form of the RX 6600 and Intel's Core i5 12400F. The 6600 is a solid GPU at 1080p and does beat out Intel's A750 Arc GPU, which is the next best option. This is a 1080p card and a 1080p card only. The 8GB of VRAM simply isn't enough for 1440p gaming. And frankly, at $300, what can you expect? It is very solid though, and you'll find great performance in your favorite titles from Apex Legends to Fortnite, CSGO. You're not gonna set the world on fire in Cyberpunk 2077. But for the vast majority of Battle Royale, FPS, and esports games, this combo works really well. The i5-12400F is also a surprisingly solid CPU, and while it may feel like we're on Intel's 14th generation now, versus the 12th gen of this 12400F, not a great deal has actually changed between those launches. The fundamental architecture remains the same, the socket and the motherboards are the same, and crucially, you get support for cheaper DDR4 memory. That makes buying a motherboard for the 12400F considerably cheaper. If you've got a little bit more money to spend though, there are some much better options that you can get for your cash. And as you'll see, by spending just another $150 or $200, you can see a really sizable performance uptick. And that comes in the form of AMD's Ryzen 5 7600 and Nvidia's RTX 4060. Now, you may have seen a video I made a little while ago on the 4060, where I called it one of my least favorite GPUs ever. And in many ways, that still reigns true. But AMD's option at this price point, the RX 76, 600 isn't a great deal better either. Now, to be clear, these are solid GPUs for 1080p gaming, and recent price drops have made them more appealing than ever. You do on the NVIDIA card, of course, get support for NVIDIA ray tracing and DLSS 3.5. The latter really helps accelerate frame rate. Yes, it's using a bit of AI trickery to get there, but the results are genuinely very solid. These pair up really nicely with AMD's Ryzen 5 7600, an absolutely phenomenal CPU for entry-level 1080p PC builds. Six cores, 12 threads, and decent clock speeds for solid single thread performance make this chip a really great bet. And while the 4060 is potentially the better all-rounder, especially if you're after those ray tracing and DLSS functionality, the 7600 is worth considering too. I know a lot of people at this price point were looking at last-gen cards previously, things like the 3060, which delivers more video memory for better 1440p performance, but crucially has less overall horsepower, and the RX 6750 XT, which while a great GPU, falls out of the budget for this combo. Personally, I still find both of these GPUs difficult to recommend, but I do acknowledge that if you want a 1080p system, they are not a completely terrible shout. Moving up the budget echelon somewhat, and this is where things start to get a lot better, and frankly, a lot more interesting. This is AMD's Radeon RX 7700 XT, and it pairs up phenomenally with the Ryzen 5 7600X. Now this GPU crucially delivers you 12 gigs of VRAM, much better for 1440p, than either the 4060 or the 7600, and it also delivers better cost per frame than the cheaper AMD and Nvidia counterparts. That's right, spending more money actually delivers better value too. Now these cards can commonly be found for around the $399 price tag. That's very similar to the price of Nvidia's 4060 Ti, a card this massively outstrips. No matter what game you throw at the 7700 XT, you're gonna see great mileage. And all of our testing shows that this is one of the best cards we think AMD 
AMD have ever produced. Nvidia simply have nothing at this price point, and it feels great to be able to recommend an AMD CPU and GPU combo. The Ryzen 7600 makes a lot of sense too. The AM5 socket I discussed earlier, really, really fantastic value for money, and the wide range of affordable B650 motherboards, which by the way support overclocking too, make it a further tantalizing prospect. I should mention that if you like this combo but want a little bit more firepower, for between $50 and $100 more, you can upgrade this to the RX 7800 XT. I really like that GPU too, and if you want even better 1440p oriented performance, that's the one to go for. Now if you want to step things up further for high-end 1440p and even a bit of 4K performance, I'm afraid to say AMD once again hold the title. Nvidia GPUs are going to come more into this as we get to that higher end of the market, but currently AMD's Radeon RX 7900GRE takes the biscuit for me. Now this is really well paired up with something like the Ryzen 7 7700 or 7700X. This is going to deliver 8 cores and 16 threads with decent clock speeds too, crucially give us that AM5 platform that we really like, and the 7900GRE, which was a late entrance to the RDNA 3 lineup, is phenomenal. Now this thing wipes the floor in our testing with the 4070 Super and even knocks on the door of the 4070 Ti Super in more instances than you might think. Its only major downside really is the fact that its ray tracing and DLSS equivalent performance just isn't nearly as good as what you'll find on Nvidia GPUs. For content creation too, I find Nvidia cards are a far easier recommend than AMD right now. The Nvidia Studio drivers and things like their AV1 encoders within DaVinci Resolve make a massive, massive difference. And the stability of those cards in workstation style applications is plainly just better. However, for gaming, this is a GPU you do not want to discount. 16 gigabytes of video memory makes it great at 1440p and 4K too, and cards like this Asus Tough Gaming card look absolutely fantastic. AMD is really applying a lot of price pressure in the market right now, and despite this, they still seem to be struggling a bit when it comes to selling their GPUs, and to be honest with you, I don't really understand why. Now, admittedly, if we work through to the slightly higher end of the market again, Nvidia really come back into the fray. The 4070 Super, while poorer value for money in terms of rasterization performance than something like the 7900GRE, makes a lot of sense if you want solid ray tracing performance. And paired up with something like Intel's Core i7-14700KF is a combo to behold. Similarly, the RTX 4070 Ti Super is a phenomenal GPU too. And with the extra video memory that was added with the launch of the Super lineup, it comes into a much more competitive position within the market. Simply put, the RTX 4070 Ti has some major firepower when it comes to 1440p performance with ray tracing enabled. Back when ray tracing first landed with us, what, like five years ago? The performance impact of the technology was simply too high, but with DLSS 3.5, that is a problem that's been solved, and frankly is one that AMD are some way behind Nvidia on. Now move through to the high, high end of the market, and this is where Nvidia really start to take the biscuit. The RTX 4080 Super is a phenomenal GPU if you want fantastic 4K gaming performance. There is not really much the 4080 Super can do, and in my opinion, the 4080 Super is so good, you probably shouldn't buy a 4090. Simply put, the price difference between this and Nvidia's top-end GPU is just too wide. Now, if you're going to use this for gaming only, I would pick up the Ryzen 7800 X3D. It's the fastest gaming CPU on the market right now, and while the core count is hardly that impressive, for gaming, you don't need the extra cores anyway. Instead, the 96 megabytes of L3 vCache makes a lot more more sense. Now you might be thinking, but James, this combo is going to cost me in the region of $1,300 or $1,400, about £1,250 if you're here in the UK. Shouldn't I just wait for AMD's newly announced Ryzen 9000 chips instead? Not so fast. Now Ryzen 9000 I think is going to be pretty good, and AMD say we're going to see, what, 16% IPC improvements? In layman's terms, that means every clock's going to deliver 16% more performance at the same clock speeds. So add in higher clock speeds and overclocking into the equation, and we could be seeing quite impressive performance uplifts, but the chips don't have the 3D stacked cache, and we're expecting 3D vCache variants later on. It's the magical cache in this thing that makes it so superb for gaming. Now admittedly, if you want a bit more of a productivity angle, you think that you're going to be playing Starfield on the weekend and doing some video editing or streaming on a Monday and Tuesday, you should swap the CPU out either for a Ryzen 9 or more preferably something like the i7-14700KF. 
While Intel CPUs run undoubtedly hotter than their AMD counterparts, and the platform is getting a bit long in the tooth by this point, I will say that the performance on offer on the multi-thread side is still far, far better than what Team Red can offer you. So that's our high-end 4K performance. What if you've got more money than cents and you want the best possible combo around right now? Well, that would have to, of course, be the RTX 4090 and i9-14900KS. Now, as far as cost, this is going to set you back well over 2000 towards $3,000. And for most people, that's going to far eclipse the overall budget of their entire build. Now, let's be honest, I think if this is the combo for you, you're probably not watching this video, but I'll leave it linked down below too and pop some performance graphs on your screen now, which show how far ahead this 4090-based combo is than basically anything else. Now, to be clear, that AMD GPUs on the top, top end are not necessarily worth discounting in their entirety. The 7900 XT with its recent price drop is pretty good, and the 7900 XTX undercut the price dropped 4080 Super 2. But this is AMD's biggest problem. The only thing really they can incentivize with their GPUs right now is price. And we haven't seen quite the level of driver optimization and improvement with Radeon 7000 that we've seen previously. The fine wine analogy whereby AMD GPUs just got better and better and better and better has certainly plateaued on this generation as AMD started at a much better point than their previous Radeon 6000 lineup. AMD then still struggling a little bit at the top end and if it was me spending eight nine hundred or even a thousand dollars on a gpu i probably would go team green are you guys gonna wait out for ryzen 9000 or are you hoping to see maybe a 5080 and 5090 later this year or do you just want to get gaming right now let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this one and want to just see more pc building goodness get subscribed and as always we'll see you in the next one